Dear children, in this video, we are going to learn the properties of determinants. This is the last topic of chapter 4 and one of the most important topics also of this chapter. As using the properties of determinants, many determinants can be easily evaluated. Sometimes the entries of determinants are a little complicated. They could be algebraic, the numbers could be huge. In that case, the determinants can easily be evaluated with the help of the properties. So we learn the properties first and then we understand how to apply them in the questions. Let's do that. First property is a determinant of Q is same as determinant of the transpose of a matrix A. Where A is any square matrix of any order, A is any square matrix. So the property is that the determinant's value does not change even if you take its transpose. The transpose of a matrix and the matrix original matrix have the same determinant. Let's verify this property taking an example. If we have any square matrix A of here order 2 I have taken. So we find out its determinant and verify the above property. Take the determinant of A which is 4 minus 6 minus 2. I will take the transpose of the matrix, no change in two columns. What do we get the determinant of the transpose? We get it as 4 minus 6 minus 2. They got both same. That means the property is verified. The determinant of a matrix remains unchanged even after taking its transpose. That's the first property being verified. Now second property. Second property of the determinant is if in a determinant, two rows, any two rows are equal or any two columns are equal, where i and j are the subscripts which denote any particular two rows, so i and j are subscripts denoting any two rows. So if ri and rj are equal, then the value of the determinant is zero. A very important property. All these properties actually are important. You cannot say one is more important than the other. Because all of them have very have got significance by the equations. So if I sometimes we find in a particular determinant, the two rows or two columns are zero. So right away we can say the value of the determinant here is zero. We can verify this property. Let's take up a matrix which has two rows or two columns C. I'm taking a matrix here of order three, five three. So one two four, and then again I've taken the uh, row two also same. Let's say. What do we get? You see, we have evaluated this determinant. You know how to, how to evaluate the determinant by expanding along a row. So, 1, 14, minus 24, minus 2 times, 7, minus 12, plus 4, expanding along row 1, 6, minus 6. So, what do we get? We get minus 10 there. Now, we get minus 5. Into minus 2 plus 0. So we get minus 10 plus 10. So resulting in 0. So we got the value of the determinant as 0. That's what the property is. That if two rows, any two rows are identical, then the value of the determinant is 0. The same result holds for any two columns also being identical. Second property is being verified. Let's move, move over to third property. This one is rather easy. If in a determinant, entire row or column is 0, entire row, let's take up a matrix uh, determinant of order 3, 5, 3. So, if you find entire row is 0 or entire column, let's take one more uh, example, where entire column is 0, then what do we find? The value of the determinant is, obviously, if you will expand along row 1, cofactors, Elements will be multiplied by the corresponding cofactor and added. The result will be 0. Because all the elements of row 1 are 0. So if you multiply these elements by the corresponding cofactors, the result is going to end up in 0. Similarly, along one column also, if entire one column is 0, then the value of the determinant is again 0. Because when you expand along the that particular column, not all the elements are 0. So that of that, all those elements with the corresponding cofactor in the sum, as a result, the sum will also end up in 0. So, this property is rather easy. The determinant is 0 if the entire row is 0 or entire column 
is 0. So, three properties we have done. So, now we will go to the fourth property now. The fourth property is that if in a row, if we multiply in a row by a constant, multiply a row by a constant scalar k, that's the fourth property here is, if we multiply, this is the row operation that I am writing down, if we, if we multiply any row by a scalar, non-zero scalar, then what happens to the value of the determinant? Same operation if we can do column wise also, if to a column we multiply the column by any non-zero scalar, then what is the value of the determinant? So that's what the uh, result is. The result I mean, can I, this property says, if you multiply any, uh, any particular row, any particular column by a non-zero scalar, in case a non-zero scalar, then the value of the determinant is k times the value of the original determinant. So let's write down here the uh, first determinant on the left hand side as old, uh, new determinant is equal to k times the value of the original determinant. So same way if any column is also multiplied by a non-zero scalar then the value of determinant is k times new determinant the value will be k times the value of the original determinant. So, ye results are going to verify property and then verify kare. Let's take up an example to verify. So, we take up a determinant here. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. This one is result. Let's take up a determinant of all the 2's. It will be higher work. Let's take up this one. It will happen quickly. So, we multiply the row 1 entries by any non zero scalar. Let's multiply. The row 1 entries by let's say 2. If we multiply the row 1 entries by 2, what do we get? Let's see what do we get. We get in the row 1 the new uh, new uh, this is the new determinant. The original determinant was this. Original determinant we have kya kiya? row 1 ki entry ki 2 se multiply kare. 2 was a 2, 2 was a 4 there. The second row is as it is. No changes have been done in the second row. So when we solve this determinant, what do we get? 2 fours are 8, 2 out of diagonal minus 4 out of off diagonal. We get the value of determinant as minus 4. And what is what was the value of the determinant originally? 1 into 4 minus 2 into the 6 minus 2. So see the results. After you multiply the row 1 by 2, the value of the determinant is minus 4. And the earlier it was original determinant was minus 2. You see that minus 2 times, this is 2 times of minus 2 is 4. 2 times of minus 2 is 4. That's what the property is. When we multiplied the first row by 2, what happened? The value of the new determinant is also is 2 times the value of the original determinant. In a way, we can say that other is property, say we can, uh, we get a very interesting result that other could common factor in a particular row mean. If you find a particular row or a column has a common factor, you can take that common factor outside the determinant. Like there was a common factor, there's a common factor 2 in the first row of this new determinant. So, we can take 2 common outside the first row. So, we've taken 2 common out of the first row, the, clearly the value is 2 times the value of the original determinant which is minus 4. So this property enables us to take a factor, common factor, to get common factor out of a particular row or a column from the determinant outside. So if you have any determinant entries in a particular row or a particular column, if you have common factor, you can easily take the common factor outside the determinant. So we've done four properties so far. We'll do fifth and sixth property in the next video.